God is good. And all the time. God is good. Hallelujah. Let's just keep praising his name together. Hallelujah.
worship you, God. Lord, even though we fail you, you're still right there for us. Hallelujah. To bring us back, oh God. Yes. On solid ground. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Upon the waters, the great and known, where feet may fail, and there I find you in the mystery, in ocean.
this coming Sunday. Praise God. And of course, our, pers- our preacher this coming Sunday is uh, Reverend Mamolang. Praise God. Hallelujah. And on your ladies' conference, it is Sister Leia Ann Mamolang. Okay, our guest speaker in your ladies' conference. So before the Word of God, I would like to ask you to please stand up with me. Bear with me because I'm, there's something wrong in my throat right now because yesterday I almost lost my voice. And may God continually supply me with a good voice so that I can preach to you with love, with boldness, with power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And thank you also to our first time guests. Thank you so much. We have five, right? Five? Okay. Because may pahabol kanina. <laughs> One baptized already. Thank you, Lord, for that uh, precious soul that have been buried in water today. And I believe the Lord is going also to fulfill His promise to the rest of our guests today. Amen. All right. If you would mind, uh, in, if you have your Bible, Deuteronomy chapter 4, reading from verse 28 and 29. Our opening scripture. It is in our uh, screen. If you don't have your Bible, the Bible said in 4:28 of uh, Deuteronomy, "And there ye shall serve gods. There are many gods. The work of men's hand. Ito yung mga gods nagawa ng kamay ng tao. It is just only a small g. So there, there are many gods in the world." And this is a work of men's hands. In wood, gawa din po ito ng material na wood and stone, which neither see, nor hear, nor eat, nor smell. Mga idols that they could, could never see, they could never hear, they could never eat, nor smell. Because they are made with wood and stone. And in 29, But if from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him if thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul. Are you expected today or are you expected today that God is going to your life, going to move into your life powerfully? But there is a condition. If thou seek him with all, not one half, not one fourth, not one thirty second, but all with all your heart, with all your soul, you will find him. We will find him. Hallelujah. So let us come to the Lord in a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, one more time, we come to you with our worship and supplication. Lord, I pray, speak to your people today. I'm just only your mouthpiece, Lord, to preach your word. But I need, Lord, your wisdom. I need your knowledge. I need the double portion of portion of your anointing release father the power of your word to be the food of our soul today remember we have guests today hallelujah you know their needs you know their longingness and quest in life but only you hallelujah can satisfy their soul even the bonafide members of this church Hallelujah. We expect more from you, Jesus. That's why, God, I pray for a greater, more revival. Strengthen us today, God, through the power of the Holy Ghost. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we trust you, Lord, and we bring back to you the glory, honor, and thanksgiving. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we give a hand clap of worship? Hallelujah and glorify the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, hallelujah. Come on, hallelujah. There is more than that, kapatid. 
Come on, let's worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. The Bible said, if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul, Amen. Meaning to say, your worship is included. Your praise is included. When you worship Him, it must be with all our heart. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. So before you take your seat, I would like to bring the message from the Lord in His title, Your Next Step is Crucial. Sabi mo sa yung katabi before you sit down. Are you ready to step? <laughs> Not run, but to step. But your next step is crucial. But I'm willing to step another step. I am willing to move another move. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God bless you and you may take your seat now. Now remember the word crucial so that we might understand what we're going to do if we mention this word crucial. It means in a synonym word, this is a vital this is a very important sa Tagalog na pakahalaga na pakaimportante. It is vital in our life. That's the word crucial in a synonym's word. But in an adjective, if you use that in a sentence, this is danger. Shall we say amen? But I'm talking to you spiritual things. I'm using the synonym words of the word crucial. That's why your next step is crucial. I will grant you today that there is a point in life that you could get to where the next step that you take is absolutely crucial because remember that life can press on you. Remember that life can shove you or can force you or either can bump your life or thirst you or barge you because your next step is crucial. It can also pressure you. It can also push you so that, to that place where it is critical. But these things can happen in existence that can force you until you feel that there is a choice that you must make to proceed. Kaya minsan, napakahirap mag-decide. Because life can put on a squeeze on you until there is a step that you must make. And that step is a crucial one. May mga bagay na decision that it is hard to say yes and to say no. Hello. It's like you and me have been traveling on a fat way up into the mountains and the path has become narrow. Because the further we travel, the narrower the fats become. Hello. The farther we travel, the higher we go. The higher we go, the more dangerous the trail. Brother Joel knows that because he is a mountainer before. The higher we go, the more dangerous the trail. The more dangerous the trail, the more on guard and aware that we should become. So your next step is crucial. Why? Because we have been traveling down this path for some time. Now when suddenly we realize that this path is only just a few inches wide. 
and the ages are crumbling. Why? Because the enemy of our soul will start you up on a path in life away from God. This is the devil's business. He will tell you how easy this path is to travel on. He will tell you how wide the path is and how much liberty you have on this path. Because this is a broad way. Because you can do anything that you want to on this path. But when you come to the end of this journey of the trail, you will find out that he was lay, lying to you. Yes. Shall we say amen? At sasabihin mo kay Satan, sinungaling ka. Akala ko. You will see that your next step now is crucial. Hello? Why, pastor, become crucial? You will be bound up in sin and the pleasure of this world. You will be hooked on drugs. You will be addicted to the battle. You will be bound up with immorality. You will be bound up with adultery. You will be bound up with fornication. And you will be bearing the heavy load of the cares of your life all alone. And then you will realize that it wasn't worth going my own way. Andoon yung pagsisisi mo, andoon yung remorse mo. Because the age of the fat drops up into a huge canyon on the one side of your life. While the other age hugs the mountain side. And we come to a point where one step is the wrong direction will lead to destruction. And the one step in the right direction will lead into safety. So it is an important step to take. It is a stride that will bring one result or the other because the next step is crucial. Come on, shall we give a hand? Is crucial. That's where some of us are in our walk with God. That's where some of us are in our life. That's where this church is in our existence today. Somebody say praise the Lord. We have a right place. We have a, a good ground that every Sunday, every day up, there is a safe place for us to rejuvenate, to revive, to restore. Hallelujah. We have traveled to the place where the next step is an important one in our life. We have journeyed to a point when there is a choice to make concerning our walk with God. And we are at a position in our life where we must plan. Shall we say praise God? As a church, we have got to decide whether we want to be. We want to be a Bible believing. We want to be a truth declaring. We want to be a God fearing soul or lost souls loving. Whatever you want, God is ready to bless you today because church is just sometimes a social club. At the next step, it's a crucial decision. Yes, it could be today, church, that you are at the point in your life where you are looking for something more than you already have in your life. But today, I can suggest to you that you give try Jesus in your life. Can I suggest to you that it is no accident that God has allowed you to be in this place. Hindi chamba kung bakit ka nandito. This is the will of God. He leads you and He brought you here. So this is not an accident that God has allowed you to be here today. Why? Because He is reaching for you today in this service. 
In Tagalog, hindi chamba na nandito ka. But the next step is crucial. Are you ready to moving on? But remember, it's crucial. We have read a while ago our text, our opening text in Deuteronomy chapter 4. Many times that I read this passage, that I need to understand the very context of this passage. That's why my, my, my title is, Your Next Step is Crucial. Remember that this passage of Deuteronomy chapter 4 is a prophecy that Moses is speaking to God's people. And he tells them that by chance, if they ever come to a place in their existence where they no longer serve God the way they do now, because Moses gave them instruction through the word of God, before they cross beyond the Jordan River, there is something to happen to you. That's the Bible said. I taught you all my statutes and my judgment. But there are times that God allow into your life that you will be scattered and go into the different cities and places. That's what our text while ago. Amen. And you also serve the idolatry made by the hands of men. You worship them. You will be scattered and you only remain few. But if you ever find that you have been corrupted by the things of the world, if you discover that you are not in obedience to the word of God, if you find out that you have taken the wrong pathway in your life, if you are doing evil in the sight of the Almighty God, Moses says, there are something that are going to happen to you as people. God will scatter you. God will not prolong your days. God will cause heaven and earth to bear witness against you. And you will serve gods of woods and stone. That's our opening text a while ago. And you will serve gods that cannot see, that cannot hear. You will be a big mess when you cross into the other side of Jordan, which God's promise to them. Allah no promise. And Moses says that when you go get to the place where you are being influenced by other gods, you had better aware because that is idolatry. You being aware because that is idolatry is always corruption of the heart. Shall we say praise God? Because idolatry always begins in the heart. It is an issue of the heart. It's not about the literal idols. But it is always begin in the heart. I will tell you this afternoon before you point, point your finger in Israel and see how they could do such thing. We had better examine also our own life first because none of us here today would serve a God made from stone or a God made from wood. But we would not be foolish as Paul portrayed that today. But let me tell you this afternoon that idolatry is anything that we allow to come in front of our relationship with God. And idolatry is always a matter of the heart. Come on, clap your hands for God's glory. Everybody say amen. amen. Remember church, nobody can put a gun to your head and make you believe that you do not want to believe. Yes. And nobody can force you to believe something that you do not want to. 
Nobody can make you backslide away from God. But if you do backslides, it's because you backslide in your heart first. And you allow the idolatry to creep into your heart. Can we give a hand clap of worship? Can we give him glory? Lord, thank you Lord for reminding me. Thank you Lord. Hallelujah. This day, you bring me here in this place. Now I go back to my text. Deuteronomy 4.29 that our text begins with four words that I want to draw your attention to. These are four powerful words in reference to this passage of the scripture. They are the word, but if from thence. This is a very important thing. That's why your steps is your next step is crucial. But if from thence, but if from that place of idolatry, or if you seek the Lord your God from there, from there you will find Him. In other words. When you get to a position where you recognize that there is idolatry in your heart, then there is something that you can do about it. But it from thence, gayon paman, if you commit sin, gayon paman, if you become backslider, there is something, another way, there is something, another chance to raise up again. Because if you seek Him, you will find Him. Despite, hallelujah, of your shortcomings, in spite of your sin against God, but if from then, mula sa yung kinawa, there is a chance because God is there. Palakpakan natin ang Panginoon. Come on. Come on. But if from thence, your next step is crucial. The enemy has invaded our ranks. But if it from thence or there, you will seek God, the Lord our God, and you shall find him. There has been influencing from other gods. But if from thence, mula sa yung pagbackslide, mula sa yung pagkakasala, if, boy, hallelujah, there is still a chance to come back again in the Lord and be revived, be restored, and raise again for another way of service. Your next step is crucial. Meaning to say, your decision today is a very important. We have corrupted ourselves with the things of this world. But if from thence, hello, your next step is important. We have done evil in the sight of the Lord. But if from thence, woo, there is still revival. There is still forgiveness. The open arms of God is still waiting to do us. If it from thence, if you come to the Lord and ask God, I need revival. I need restoration. Hallelujah. God is going to move in your life. Because if you seek the Lord, thy God, you shall find Him. Oh, come on. Shall we worship God? Oh, shakarabak. Sometimes we shall provoke God to anger. 
but if from thence, woo, your next step is crucial. Moses said that it is possible through the corruption of the heart that you could get to this place. But when you recognize it, your next step is very important. Your yes to God to come back to Him is a very important thing. Despite, hallelujah, of we have many flaws, despite of a black backsliding heart, church, God is still giving us a chance always to restore and to revive and to be blessed by God. Oh, come on. Can we give one more time of worship? Hallelujah! Hmm? It is possible today in this service that you could recognize your dilemma or the situation that you are in. Lord, I am lost. I be stayed away from you. I have allowed things to get into my spirit. I've done something that are wrong and now I can't break the hold of sin on my life. I've lost my relationship with God. If from that point you are able to see where you have drifted and recognize your condition, your next step is crucial. Shall we say amen? amen? If by some beautiful, merciful act of God, you become aware of your condition, if you receive a wake-up call today, if you recognize your dilemma, if you acknowledge the predicament that you are in, the next step is crucial. God is waiting for decision today. That is a very important, that is a very vital in the sight of God. Shakara Mahakataya. Woo! You might say, Pastor, that was just for the Old Testament saints. No. The Bible is not only applicable for the Old Testament. The Word of God is for everybody. That's what Deuteronomy 4, 29-31 but it from thence thou shalt seek the Lord thy God, thou shalt find him. If thou seek him with all thy heart and with all thy soul, you shall find him. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, thou shalt be obedient unto his voice. Hallelujah. For the Lord thy God, is merciful God. He will not forsake you, neither destroy you, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which is swear unto them. Because he, God, is always remember you if you know how to decide because your next step is crucial. <laughs> Hallelujah. Come on. Isa pang ang malakas na papuri sa Dios. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible said that even in the latter days, if you will just call out upon His name, He is always there. Some people here today are close to the age. You're close to losing your soul. But one step in the wrong direction would mean destruction. And one step in the right direction would mean safety. Before you do anything, I want to remind you this afternoon that your next step is crucial. But it will bring revival to you. It will bring restoration to your life. Shall we say amen? And somebody here today needs to say, I'm not going to take that step to destruction, Pastor. 
Somebody needs to call out upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ today. Remember 7.14 of 1 Chronicles? 2 Chronicles? If my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, here we go, the blessing of God. Then I will hear from heaven and I will... Oh, Thank God for the forgiveness of sin, Lord. Thank God for the healing. I know you may be hurting right now. I know you may be in trouble right now. I know it might be difficult right now. But the next step is for very important things to your life. Shall we say amen? If you'll just take a step toward. Deliverance, Sister Lucy, will come upon you. Victory will come upon you. Safety in the right road, in the right direction, and you can feel the spirit of repentance. And say, Jesus, I'm going to call you, Lord, one more time. I've done it in the past, I've done it yesterday, but today is a new day. I'm calling upon you today. But remember, the next step is crucial. However, we will not take the step that we don't want to take. Well, in fact, throughout the scripture, God concedes this point. He never forces himself upon anyone. He never makes anyone live for him. He calls us. He prompts us. He falls for us. He reaches for us. But He never force us. He never makes us do anything that we do not want to do. Who goes to the church? Those who want to go to the church. Who doesn't go to the church? Those who do not want to go to church. Who receive the Holy Ghost? Who serve God? Who praise? Who want to read the Bible? Who live for God? But He never force us. He never make us to do anything that we do not want to do. That's why your next step is crucial. But remember the line while ago. Despite of your shortcomings. Despite of your flaws. Hallelujah. If despite of the sin that you committed beyond Jordan. If you seek God. You will find him. And if you will find him. Huh, there is a restoration. That is going to your life. Hallelujah. The Holy Ghost is going to fill you again. For the second time around. Come on. Shall we give a uh, worship to God? Shall we give him praise? Woo. Because the critical issue or dilemma. Is that not one person will take that crucial step of deliverance. Unless it is in your heart to do it. Pero hindi ka pipilitin ng Diyos. Ikaw ang magdi-decide niyan. You need to start first. The very engine inside of you. The car will not run unless you start the engine. But there is something that is going to happen. Before the engine start. Why there is ignition switch? 
Because you want to connect the positive to the negative from the battery power so that the engine will start. When the engine will start, you can hear now the pour-out machine. Brum, 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 and ready to run. But your next step is crucial. Revival is not started from me. It is not started from God. It will always started from us. Inside of us. So when you start the engine, hello, kahit sa ang lugar ka sa Hong Kong, dadalhin ka ng car mo. Meaning to say, when you start the engine of repentance, when you start the engine of praise and worship, anywhere God can bring you there into the highest level of revival. Come on, worship God. It's not about Pastor Librado who preached behind this pulpit. It's about you to start. But your decision, your step is a crucial one. The Bible let us know that it is the Holy Ghost that causes the secret of the heart to be revealed today. That's why people resist the Holy Ghost because they will have to change. That's why people resist the presence of God. You cannot fool men sometimes into thinking that everything is all right, but you cannot fool God. Because man looks on outward, but God looks on the heart. Come on, shall we give one more time a hand clap of worship? I tell you, there's engine inside your heart right now. Because the heart is the set of your feeling and your emotion. That's where your feeling comes from and what's where your emotion comes from. The Bible says the issue of life are Ill always in the heart. That's why Proverbs 4.23 Keep thy heart with all diligence. Pour out of it. There are issues of life. Before I'm going to close this, don't let anything into your heart that is not right. Don't let corruption inside your heart. Don't let the word in. Don't let evil in. Hello? Because when it gets into your heart, it's hard to deal with it and hard to get it out from our heart. Meaning your heart today will determine your next step. A weighty matters <laughs> comes from the heart. And we sometimes resist because it's difficult at the best to deal with the heart. Hello? But ask God, Lord, change my heart. Yes, a heart of flesh. That stony heart. <laughs> God is able to change it in a flesh of a heart. Woo! What, should next your, what should your next step be? You need to find out what is in your heart. And if it's in your heart to be delivered, God will do it. Amen. Will save it. You will set free. You will forgive it. Because the Holy Ghost will help you to do that. He cannot help you with your statement. But there is something God, hallelujah, is in heaven. And now he is here right now. Willing, hallelujah, to minister your life. Willing to help you to change your heart. That's what the Bible says. Delight yourself in the laws of the Lord. 
And He will give you the desires of your heart. So we like the desires of our heart. But we don't like delighting ourselves in the Lord. You don't have to solve all the problems of your life today. But you must take a step in the right direction. You cannot fix everything today, even if you wanted to. But you have to got to do something. Because your next step is crucial. Are you ready? Are you ready to step? Hallelujah. It's Jesus knocking on the door of your heart. Jesus is knocking on the doors of people's heart today. He is knocking on the collective heart of this church body. And he is knocking on the heart of someone who has never really repented. He is knocking on the heart of a person who has never received the Holy Ghost. And he is knocking on the heart of a person who has strayed from away from God. And God saying, come home my daughter. Come home my son. He is knocking on the heart of the Christian whom he desired to get closer to God. He is knocking on the heart today. The next step is crucial. But do not ignore your heart. Do not ignore because there is something restoration. There is something revival that is going to your life today. Are you ready to moving on? Or are you ready to move on? Shall we stand together, church? Standing is the first step of your crucial decision. But there is some more that is going to happen to your life today. I will going to open this altar. Who want to move in the next step. He is knocking on the heart of a person who has trying strayed. Hallelujah. He's knocking on the heart of the Christian who he desired to get closer to God. Hallelujah. <laughs> Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and open the door, I will come into him and sup with him and he with me. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I feel the wind is blowing again. Hallelujah. Come on, are you ready for your next step? Open your heart. And ask the Lord, God, I need restoration. I need the refreshing of your spirit. I want revival today. Oh, I want change. I want change, Lord. I want the Holy Ghost. Oh, come on. Come on. The altar, hallelujah, is open for everyone who...